Hello, today we're going to look at what it takes to expose an operation using Jitterbit's API manager. So we have an operation set up here, which is going to take a request coming in from the API. It's going to take that JSON and convert it from JSON and, and actually insert it into a database. This is a multi-table uh, insert. It's going to insert into customers and then join that into contacts as well. And then based on whether it's successful or not, we're going to go ahead and send a success Boolean back. And then that's going to go as our API response. So let's go ahead and take a look at the API manager. So this is the API manager. Here you can see all the existing um, APIs that we've created. Also, you can sort it and do that sort of thing. But let's go ahead and say we want to go ahead and create a new API. So first, we'll go ahead and give it a name. Go ahead and choose the environment. Give it a version. You don't have to give it a version, it's optional. You can also give it a, a description. You can change the timeout. So if this is a longer running operation, you can do that. Or if it takes uh, you know, 10 seconds and anything longer you want it to error out, you can do that as well. Also the ability to force SSL only. And also cores. So this gives us the ability to test with our Swagger documentation. So I'm gonna go ahead and enable that as well. You can also, Enable the debug mode, which this gives more detail in the API logs uh, to help you troubleshoot if needed. Now it's time to choose the project and the operation, and then the method that's going to be supported. For this one, we're going to go ahead and do post. You could do a, you know, any of these other ones, depending on what your operation does, but I'm going to go ahead with post. And then response, where it's coming from. So you can do final target, system variable, no response, depending on, the, on your needs. So I'll go ahead and assign that operation. So now that this is assigned, we'll go ahead and continue. Now we can choose a security profile, or we can create a new one. So let's go ahead and create a new one. Um, here you could do anonymous basic OAuth 2. This also gives you the ability to rate limit, whitelist, add custom headers, things like that um, for logging. All right, so we've got a new profile created. I'm going to go ahead and assign it. Go ahead and do next. So now we can overview the, the API that's going to be created. Up above, you will notice the API URL that's going to be used and some of the, uh, and the other options that we chose. From here, you can export it if you want to save it for later. You can delete it. You can save as a draft. Let's go ahead and save and publish. Now here we've, we have our URL. And this is something that we could copy in and go to our application wherever we want to use it, and, and it would be accessible. But let's go ahead and do the view documentation. So this is our open API Swagger 2.0 documentation. So let's go ahead and regenerate this so that this gets the latest operation in the list. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and go down to our create. There we go, create customer and contact. And you notice that we've got the JSON structure that we're expecting, and then also the JSON um, operation that we expect as a response. And let's go ahead and authenticate so that we can test out this operation. So we authenticated. Now we can go ahead and do try out. So we can modify this here, but I actually have a sample that I'd like to use to go ahead and execute this. So now that we have some sample data there, I'm going to go ahead and do execute. So this is calling the operation on the back end, sending the payload to that API that we just created. And then you'll notice here we also do the curl request. So if uh, you're working with a customer that 
you know, is familiar with curl, you can give them this. Uh, instead of the Swagger documentation, kind of gives you a sample of what should work. And also the response that we um, got back and any headers that were attached as well. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple other features. So there is this portal as well. This is something that you could embed um, in your own application or in your own website. So anybody referencing APIs could have access to it. So this is something where somebody can come in here and do kind of what we did on the other page, but without the ability to edit and modify that, the Swagger documentation. So let's go ahead and expand this. So very similar, but they can still try it out um, on their own. The other thing we'd like to take a look at is the API logs. So with each log comes the request time, uh, any source, IP source information. And if you did, for some reason, turn on debugging, you would also get additional information here as well. Analytics. So this gives a hits per day, hits per hour, ability to filter. Also, you can filter by environments, by your API that you have exposed, different profiles as well. And then finally, our security profiles. So if you do have to come in here and modify any of your profiles, this is available as well. And thank you for, for um, looking at the Jitterbit API platform.